Hello, everybody, and welcome to this Profiling Evil Minute with Court TV. Tonight, I'm going to be talking with Vinnie Politan about an unsolved Milwaukee murder from 2007. I mean, that's a long time ago. It was after hours when 21-year-old Yolanda Lala Brown, an artist, and 22-year-old Jatan Kool-Aid Claiborne were shot and killed at, at Jatan's recording studio. To this day, nobody has been charged with the case. Let's jump over to the discussion now. It is time to open up tonight's unsolved case file. This is where we take a look at a, um, and in this, in this case tonight, a, a double murder where questions have not been answered. There's not enough information. Uh, no one has been charged. There's no justice. There are no answers. And we're asking you for your help. If you have any information, we're going to keep those, those phone numbers up uh, throughout the segment tonight. We've also posted it on social media. Uh, so if you have information, please come forward. This one goes back 14 years. A couple of really talented young people. Um, an incredible loss uh, for the families and, and, and for the world, for the music that they were making and the music they were going to make. I'm talking about Lala Brown and Jatan Claiborne, um, a, a, a recording artist and a producer, um, shot and killed, so young, so talented. WTMJ, our great affiliate, has the story. It was their families who found their bodies days after they were murdered. Yolanda Lala Brown and Jatan Claiborne loved each other and they loved music. We got one of Milltown's finest right now. At the young age of 22, Jatan Kool-Aid Claiborne opened Loud Enough Music Studios in Milwaukee. That was his thing, music. Whether playing the keyboard or the drums, this music producer could always find a tune. People love these beats that he would do. You got the young producer Kool-Aid in the building. And that's where he got the name Kool-Aid, because he would give you this great big old smile. He just, he was so excited about the studio. But the beat stopped and gunshots echoed in the studio in October 2007. What happened to Jatan was wrong. Jatan's brother made the gruesome discovery. He'll never forget what he saw. He'll never forget the smell and what he saw. The producer, along with his girlfriend, R&B artist Yolanda Lala Brown, both shot to death inside the studio. He had so much to offer the world, and his life was sniffed out by someone that just didn't care for human life. We actually don't know what the motive, you know, behind these murders were. But police do believe the couple knew the killer. One of them opened the door to the studio. A nearby surveillance video shows the killer entering. And moments later, you see a person uh, running out of, out of the uh, studio. Police say the entire crime happened in less than two minutes. We, we can't even put into words the, the hurt. Lala's father, William Brown, still mourns the loss of his beautiful, talented, self-made daughter. She went out there and she read the book to find out how to do the music industry and try to get over with the bigger people, and, and this is what happened. Milwaukee police say they have two suspects who are being held out of state on other charges, but so far no one has ever been charged for the murders. They think they got a pretty good case. I don't know what's holding up the DA right now. Jatan Claiborne's mother says even as she waits for answers, the family refuses to turn the focus today on something negative. I will not let this go unsolved. I am going to speak up. She says she won't let their names die. Okay, if you have that piece of information, and you may not think it's important, but it could make all the difference. Here's the number, 414-933-4444. 414-933-4444. That's the Milwaukee Police Department. And think about this case, what you just heard. They're suspects. But this is 14 years later. 14 years later. But we have suspects. What, what is going on here? Um, let's bring in our guest, uh, still with us, private investigator Eric Morse, retired police commander, host of the Profiling Evil podcast, Mike King. And joining us now by phone is uh, Jatan's uh, stepbrother, Anthony Cooley, and uh, Jatan's mom, uh, Dinah Chambers, are with us. So thank you all for being here. 
Uh, Dinah, yeah. how how are you how are you right now tonight? Uh, of course, our, our thoughts are with your family. Um, how are you holding up tonight? And and what what are you thinking right now? Wow, as we review this information that you so generously displayed, and I thank you so, uh, Vinny, for your your generosity today, and Marina Hutchinson. You guys have been a jewel in my life regarding this right now, keeping this thing alive and open. Right now, my heart is still heavy as I look at this video, and not only heavy for my son, but the interview was done also with my sister who's gone on and passed away. Uh, so to see both of their faces, I know she went for a medical reason, but this time was gunned down wrongfully. And she didn't even get to see this case solved, and she's gone. But she helped to try to solve it, you know? Her name was Kathleen. But my my whole thought today or tonight is that these corporates know who they are. There are people in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the Brew City, that knows what happened to my son and what happened to Lala. They know what happened to Kool-Aid because they have been talking about it and they've been brown nosing around trying to find out answers. And I believe justice should come tonight, then. That's my thoughts right now. I'm very heavy, you know, relinquishing these uh, moments, knowing it's been 15 years later. It should not take this long. I am petitioning and I am calling out to the entire world, wherever you are, to call in regarding this case. It is time that justice is going to be done. He has two beautiful children, Jatan, Jeremiah Claiborne, Isaiah Curtis Claiborne, who carries his name. Isaiah never even met his father. He was murdered and gunned down before his birth. And it's just sad that I have to explain their dad to him, you know, to them with this type of episode going on. It would be so wonderful, Vinny, if people would just really call in. Somebody knows something. There are tidbits of something out here regarding this murder. I will feel a lot better, and I won't let go of God's unchanging hand. My prayers have been going up, and I know they're being answered because you called Vinny and Maria and Hutchinson's call. Y'all, I know there's a God that's listening at me, and I just pray and hope tonight that someone, someone will take the time and pick up the phone and give our family justice. The Brown family and the Claiborne family, we deserve that much. You absolutely you. do. You absolutely do. Yes. Anthony, this has to be so difficult for you. It's been very difficult. He just another birthday just passed, and once again, we don't have any answers. Um, for me, I ain't gonna lie, I'm I'm kind of lost faith in the system, you know. And not to say that the system is bad, it's just maybe it's not good for us. I mean, at some point, I mean, you got to ask: Does Black Lives really matter? You know, even in the black community. Right now, this is what fourteen years. For fourteen years, we're going on, and we all have an inkling of what's happening. And for what's going on in Milwaukee, um, these were two of Milwaukee's favorites that had their futures right in front of them to actually put the city on the map. And unfortunately, they had to be put on the map with a situation like this, losing their lives. What we're just wanting is Milwaukee to step forward to kind of take care of his own, you know, and say, hey, we care. We care, you know. Um, but right now, I'm, I'm, I'm heavy-hearted as well to hear my mother, um, to know that his, his children are out there, one's never met him. It's, it's very upsetting. Mike King, what words uh, do you have tonight? Well, well, first to Anthony, thank you so much for, for your words, Anthony, and, and the system still will work. It's just such a difficult burden that's placed on uh, law enforcement and prosecution to have all the pieces to, to convict. And, and they may have a real strong feeling, and it sounds like there's lots of sentiment that suggests who may be responsible. And Ms. Chambers, holy cow, I, as you spoke, I was just so proud of you as a mom. And I, I, I got to tell you, the minute I... I watched at the moment I watched Jatan and saw his face, my face lit up. I mean, that kid, like.
in a room and you you must be just so proud and I'm so, so sorry you lost them but my my message I guess Vinny is don't give up faith on the system just recognize this, that it's it's not an issue of black lives matter or or faith in the system it's a matter of having the evidence to prove it and having people step up with the courage to report what they know and what you're doing is going to be the thing that makes a difference because it'll appeal to people and somebody out there some point is going to have a piece of human compassion and share with law enforcement what happened i'm sorry when i say black lives matter i mean just black lives matter in the black community I didn't no, that, I, uh, I I got that, that I got that Anthony, and I I, I wasn't suggesting anything political. I was I was just making a point, and I wanted you to know, like for me, Black Lives Matter, but but um, okay. these investigations, yeah. uh, it, the truth okay. matters, okay. and they just have to put this thing together. And I just you, you, I just wish I could go and hang out with you and your family because you just seem like amazing people. Erica, we have about a minute, Erica, if you could just tie this up in, in a bow for us tonight and, and, and give us some more words to help uh, Dinah and Anthony and, and, and work through this so we can get them justice. There's a lot um, I, I want to say to them, but uh, to wrap it up, um, Anthony and Mom, um, biggest amazing advocates, keep it up. You're doing exactly what needs to be done right now. I am going to recommend, as someone who has run an R&B station at the time that this occurred, and knowing how important your son was to the R&B community, reach out to your local stations in Milwaukee. Okay, get that reward raised. If that law firm is still opening or offering that $2,500 reward, use your local radio stations to get that money up. We're in a pandemic. Milwaukee has gone through a lot of economic distress. That money, I think, will get somebody to come forward. Thank you. I'm going to put another 5000 up myself. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. And Amazing. Okay. I'm going to end this with a tidbit of saying, too. Thank you all for all that you're doing. You are jewels in our life. We really appreciate you all. And another thing, Hassan, even though I, I know I lost him, I'd rather have him back. But Milwaukee has that one great thing. I was invited out in 2019, and Jatan received a proclamation and has become uh, the, the month of June is now Black Music Month, and he has a wonderful proclamation in his name. It's a very big honor that I really appreciate, too, from everybody, all the senators and everyone who put that in place. I just want to thank you all again for just taking the time. It is truly an honor to have you. Benny Politan, Marina Hutchins, and you too, young man. I can't figure your name right away, but I love you guys. Thank you so much for what you do. Thank you, Dinah. And uh, thank you, Anthony. Our, our best to you. 5,000 more he's going to put on this, folks. Make that call. Erica Morris, Mike King, thank you as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed this segment of Profiling Evil, a minute with Court TV. I want to thank Vinny Politan and the entire team at Court TV for allowing me to come on and and share a few thoughts as we tackle some of these difficult cases. Please take a moment, hit that like and the subscribe button and ring the bell so that you get all of the notifications on our videos like this one. And, and thank you so much for supporting us here at Profiling Evil. We'll see you soon at the next crime scene. Hey everybody, if you're looking for a good read, please take a minute and look at my book, Deceived, an investigative memoir of the Zion Society cult. It explores a case that happened 34 years ago, and it, and it talks about uh, child sex abuse in a way that isn't offensive and yet really calls it like it is. I think it's a book that you'll learn a lot from. It'll also give you a chance to look into cult behaviors and learn a little bit more about how cults recruit people, how they manage things, how they keep in business. You can order it at profilingevil.com if you want a signed copy from me in hardbound, or you can just go to Amazon and get it in paperback or an ebook. Thanks so much for your support of Profiling Evil. We'll see you soon at the next crime scene.